Good morning, Winnicunnet. I'm Lily Craig. And I'm Hunter McKenzie. Welcome to the start of a brand new trimester here at Winnicunnet. And you know what that means, Hunt. Yeah, Lil. With second try in full swing comes the return of WHTV. You cold, Hunt? I'm freezing. It's these winter months creeping up on us, I'm telling you. Yeah, but not everyone hates winter, especially all those snow bunnies who play winter sports. Oh yeah, I'm thinking about trying out for basketball, actually. Oh, nice. Yeah, but I'm not that great. I, I need somewhere to train, though. Well, you're in luck. Hampton just opened up a new sports complex for athletes. Really? No way. Yep, Ross and Cam have a story on it. Roll it. As you can see, we're at the Winter kind of Gym. Or where else can you play basketball? Me and Ryan went to go check out the rim. At the rim, there are six basketball volleyball courts for kids of all ages. The room is located at 311 Winnicunnet Road. Part owner, Peter Marr, saw a need for a facility like this in the community. The concept was really uh, done from my business partner, Tom Viviano, Hampton native. And there was really a need for a facility like this uh, in the Seacoast area. And what we're trying to do is, is have the kids come in after school. It's for ages 10 through 18. Kids come in here. They can blow off some steam for an hour, run around, play hoops, play dodgeball, volleyball, whatever you want to do. And then they get an hour in the classroom, we have a tutor. So we have a certified New Hampshire State tutor. To get a membership at the rim, it costs $15 a month, or you can walk in and play for $5. Also at the rim, there is a fitness center, which we got more information from by Matt Zelog, the sports performance coordinator. This is the Athletic Performance Center of Exeter Hospital, the rim itself is trying to envision a building a complete athlete and as part of that we provide the strength and conditioning services. Our, our programs are specific for um, athletes competing in numerous sports or athletes that just want to be physical. Kids around the area seem pretty excited about the new facility. Uh, I really like it here. You know it's a nice courts here. You got about six courts here. Way better than the Seabrook Rec. Uh, it's a big facility. Uh, I like the nets. Nets are good. You know short, not long. Um, um, I'm not a basketball player, but as you can see, I love uh, watching the game. Place is unbelievable. And it's just a great spot to come, meet up with friends, play some basketball. I like this place because it's big and it's inside, not and when it's rainy, you can come in here. The rim is good, like the rims on the basket, you know. I like the rim because my friends come here and I like basketball. It's my favorite sport. Sure, personally, it's all about getting buckets, you know, it's, if you don't get buckets, then you're not going to win, so thank you. Next time you're looking to play basketball, you should check out the rim. Ross and Ryan, signing out. Man, now I know where to go shoot some hoops. Lil, what are you listening to? Oh, the new Lady Gaga song. Oh, I haven't heard it yet. You know, I've always wondered where music comes from, the history of it. Well, you're in luck. Nick Sita has the perfect story for you. Whether you guys listen to Beethoven, Metallica, Justin Bieber, rock and roll, or smooth jazz, music is a part of our daily lives. Tyler Johnson and I decided to look into a little bit of the history of music we listen to today and what the students here at Wanna Kind of listen to. Check it out. Like uh, Beethoven, Mozart stuff, that was the classical music, that was the pop music of the day. And then once we got electricity and amplifiers and Elvis Presley, it turned into rock and roll. The Beatles were a huge influence for, for rock and roll and groups. Um, the Ed Sullivan Show, and uh, they were probably the first pop band. So in the 70s, um, as far as pop music, you had, uh, you know, some of the rock bands were coming out. The Who was, was gaining popularity, Led Zeppelin. Uh, but at the same time, you had disco taking place with, uh, you know, the synthesizers and the nightclubs. Um, and then uh, disco in the 80s, actually, because of the, the nature of having uh, DJs instead of live um, uh, instead of having live music, having DJs, that turned out to become the inspiration for rap uh, because the guys like to spin the, the records and, and uh, you know, put together dance mixes and they started getting creative with how they were looping the records together and they started rapping over it and actually talking over the dance breaks and, and the albums and that kind of led to, to rap and, and hip-hop breaking out. Yeah, Michael Jackson in the 80s, uh, he, you know, not only musically 
but as far as how concerts how concerts went and and videos you know the fact that every song he did uh, he wore a different costume had a different persona he wasn't just michael jackson you know uh, videos became little movies and and concerts became like plays um and in the 90s you know you can thank uh uh grunge uh nirvana uh, uh yeah yeah in the 90s you can thank kurt cobain uh, uh, you know, for, for getting that gritty sound out there in the 90s. and uh, So what kind of, what do you listen to? Some of my favorite music is Frank Sinatra. Favorite type of music depends on what we're doing. Like, I love classical music when I'm playing a bassoon. I like Beethoven. I really love jazz when I'm working with a jazz band. I like Christmas music. I like singing jazz. I do that in the army band. The Goo Goo Dolls. I like pop music with electronic music class. My favorite music would have to be the Jonas Brothers. I like Justin Bieber. Favorite music is hardcore and uh, Norwegian black metal. Well, my favorite artist of all time is definitely the Beatles. Wow, music in our school is very diverse. That's all we have for you today, when it kind of Have a nice Friday. Wow, that was really interesting. I know, right? Music is really fascinating stuff. Hey, have you ever heard of Barry Donnellian? I don't think so. He's this Grammy-nominated trumpet player who toured with people like Billy Joel, Barbara Streisand, even Bruce Springsteen. Get this, he went to win a it. No way! Do we have a story on it? Of course we do! A legendary trumpet player once walked these halls and won a it. He knew from a young age what he wanted to do. Ross and I got the opportunity to talk to him. His name? Barry Donnellian. Barry Janillian graduated one of with a class in 1980. Former classmates and teachers to this day still remember him as an amazing trumpet player. He talked to me about his days here at one of I, I got to one of in 1976. I graduated class of 80, ancient history. <laughs> um, you know, I mean, I guess my, my, my high school experience was probably pretty typical. Um, I think probably what was different for me personally was that I knew that I wanted to be a musician basically from the time I was like maybe in fourth to fifth grade. I mean, I, I wasn't like a great student. Uh, it wasn't because I was stupid, but I just was so into music. I was basically blowing off classes and going to the music room and practicing and writing music. And, and, and that was really my whole focus. Brian Yane, an English teacher here when I kind of went to school with Barry. He talked to me about Barry's talent. Obviously, you remember Barry because he was, even at that age, he was a phenomenal. Uh, musician, a phenomenal trumpet player. Amazing to watch the progress from being very good to being outstanding. After when I cut it, he moved on to the prestigious Berklee School of Music. There he excelled at playing the trumpet. So when I got to Berklee, you know, here I am in one of the best music schools in the world. I'm getting my butt kicked. You know, it's being the best football player at one cut it, and then you go to like some big university. Two things happen. There's really only two things that can happen. You get whooped and you say, oh, you know what? This isn't for me and you leave and it's not for you and that's cool you go on to do something else or you you double down and you go in the practice room and you work your butt off and you practice eight hours a day and that's what i did barry has played with some of the greats in all music such as dizzy gillespie james taylor billy joel queen latifah and the ray charles he told us what it was like to play with ray if you start paying attention to ray you're going to get so enthralled and how great he is that you're going to completely miss your parts. <laughs> and that's exactly what happened. The minute he starts singing, you just can't help yourself. I mean, it's like unbelievable, you know. So you're just drawn into Ray Charles and just in awe of how great he is. And then all of a sudden, you're missing you're missing the part. And now he plays with the boss himself, Bruce Springsteen. In music, um, you, you have to be willing to take those risks. You know, in order to get to the great stuff, yeah. that's how the great the greatness comes out when nobody knows what's going to happen, and you're willing to go right out on that edge of the cliff and and be willing to fall off the cliff in order to get greatness to happen. It was a pleasure talking to Barry about him and his career path. He dreamed of being a great musician, and he did. Ross and Kyle signing up. Well, when it comes, it looks like that's all we have for you today. Aww. Well, don't worry, Lil. We'll be back next Friday. Awesome. This is Hunt and Lil. In our shining debut on WHTV. Signing out. Have a great weekend, Wanna Cut It. Bye. Hold on, Wanna Cut It. Come support my fun Beyond the Rainbow in a breast cancer awareness game between the Exeter Blue Hawks and the Wanna Cut It Warriors hockey game. Tomorrow at 6.30. Be there. Thanks. <laughs>